In this video, I'm going to show you how different vintage lenses produce different bokeh effects, and specifically different kinds of bokeh balls and bubbles. Lenses can produce all sorts of out-of-focus shapes and effects in the right conditions. In one of my other YouTube videos, I took a more scientific approach to studying these effects using a wall of lights. You can see how round shapes at the center of an image are changed by the curves of the glass elements in a lens into oval shapes or cat size, and how different lenses produce different shapes and effects, ranging from ultra-smooth shapes to bubbles with rings around their edges. Using a homemade star filter on the front of a Helios 44-2, I also demonstrated how the lens distorts and twists light in a three-dimensional way towards the edge of the frame, producing a swirly look. Now, when I start using a vintage lens for the first time, I like to test its bouquet by taking photos of fences. I do this because looking down a fence gives you a good idea of how sharp the lens is, how it handles transitions from into and out of focus, what the out of focus blurred areas look like, and how the lens handles bright light and produces bouquet balls and bubbles, especially if the sun is shining, as well as how it flares. So I thought it might be interesting and helpful to share these images with you, grouped into the different brands of lenses I've been using. There are time links in the description if you'd like to go straight to a specific brand. I hope you enjoy all the photos. There's quite a variety of compositions and results, and a number are rather beautiful and striking. And at the end of the video, I'll draw some conclusions about all the lenses and their bouquet effects. So let's start with a brand that generates quite a lot of interest when I post photographs by their old lenses, because of their unique and sometimes eccentric character wide open. The brand is Mare Optic Gurlitz, and from now on I'm going to call it Mog, just to keep it short. The oldest Mog lens I own is a Primatar E 50mm f3.5. You can't get very close to objects, given the lens's rather long minimum focus distance. So the bokeh balls tend not to be very big, but they are quite distinctive, with lines around the highlights, the kind of lines that help produce soap bubble bokeh. Although for this lens, it's more a case of tiny little bubbles and pretty busy bokeh. I do like this lens, it's quite a challenge, and often needs a lot of post-production, but it delivers interesting results. Next is the Primatar 50 f2.8, a rarer lens, only made for one year from 1959, slightly sharper than the f3.5 Primatar, with better colour rendering. The bouquet is equally busy, but my f2.8 seems to produce less defined lines to the bubbles. Then there's the Oriston 50mm f1.8. My Zebra version is a really good lens, and I love its bouquet. And this is one of my favourite fence bouquet shots, taken with any lens. Less impressive in terms of conventional optical performance, but it makes up for this in its eccentricities, is the Domiplan 50mm f2.8 with its triplet design. Triplet designs are classic soap bubble bouquet producers. The Primaplan 58mm f1.9 is a much sought after lens, and I enjoyed borrowing one for a short while, when it took this rather lovely image. Then there's a chronically underrated, to me anyway, Orista 100mm f2.8. I've got the Zebra version, the one with 15 blades. It's a surprisingly small lens, but it packs a big punch, especially after you boost the colours and contrasts. And another lens I borrowed was the Mog Primata 135mm f3.5, and this turned out to be an amazing soap bubble bouquet lens. The interesting thing about this lens is a Tessa design rather than a triplet, a triplet like that other monster soap bubble bokeh producer, the Trio Plan 100 f2.8. As you may know, Mare Optic Gurlitz lenses were rebranded as Pentagons, including the Oriston 50 f1.8, and here's a photo from the Pentagon version. I saw this lens because I only needed one, and for purely subjective reasons I seem to like the Mog Oriston version better. And here's a lens I'm very fond of, the 15-bladed Zebra 135mm f2.8. I took this photo to demonstrate how the 15 blades stopped down helped to keep almost circular bouquet balls. The next brand I'm going to cover is Carl Zeiss Jena, and I'll refer to it simply as Zeiss. There's a bit of a history in the brand name you might like to read about online, but I'll not go into that now. Starting with a wider angle lens, the Zeiss 35mm f2.4 in its M42 mount Flectigan version, or the Practica mount version called the Practica. Good copies are sharp, close up and wide open, and the bouquet is rather lovely. These images are from the Practica. 
and these are from the Flectigan. The oldest Zeiss lens I own from around 1950 is the excellent and cute Biotar T 58mm f2 with 17 blades and supposedly the model for the Helios 44s, so you'd expect it to produce swirly bouquet, and it does, although perhaps not as much as the Helios's. The one main drawback of the lens is the relatively long minimum focus distance. It was shortened with later Biotar versions. Next in line is the Tessa 50mm f2.8, a lens and design that was known as the Eagle Eye for its sharpness long ago. All I can say is I don't use the old lens as much as I should do, and that's my fault and not the lenses. I've got two 50mm pan colours. One is the M42 mount f1.8, the radioactive version with the eight blades, and it's a very good lens if you're looking for beautiful bouquet. My copy has a strong tint to images from its yellow glass, which you can use to your advantage, especially in the autumn. The other pan colour is an exact amount 50mm f2, and I find my copies a little softer and more dreamier than the f1.8 wide open. Not that that's a terribly bad thing, it has a charm of its own with excellent bouquet and bouquet balls. The Zebra 135mm f3.5 Sona lens is an absolute classic, perhaps less well known or respected today. But this is, in my opinion, a really good lens for what it is, if you get a good copy. My copy is very sharp, very colourful, and the bouquet is lovely. I know it doesn't have all those aperture blades of those so-called bouquet monsters, with 15 or 15 plus blades. However, wide open blades are irrelevant. And now onto the Japanese Takuma lenses, later branded as Pentax. I own a large number of Takumas, and I've found that lens by lens, they can produce quite different results. Even within a lens series, such as the 55mm f1.8, they can differ, depending on designs, coatings, and so on. The widest Takuma lens I use for bokeh rich images is the Auto Takuma 35mm f2.3, and the bokeh is very rich from this lens, especially on a crop sensor. It's probably the most eccentric of all the Takumas I own, but then it's even an eccentric looking lens if you've seen one. The oldest M42 Takuma I own from 1957 is a 58mm f2.4. This lens has a Helia design, subsequently dropped for later Takuma Fast 50s in favour of a Gaussian Ultron design. I'm glad they made this lens and I've been able to find one as it's quite rare because I really like the images it produces. They have a little bit of everything, slightly soapy bubbles and a hint of swirl. Also from 1957, the 58mm f2, based on a Sona design, again soon dropped as a design. But you can tell from the relatively large number of fence bouquet images here that I enjoy the results. Including some tasty flair. To complete a trio of 1957 lenses, there's also a 55mm f2.2 preset lens with a pure Gaussian design, again with a hint of swirls. The Takuma 50mm f1.4 is a classic Fast 50 and came in different versions, starting with the 8 element Super Takuma and then a 7 element Super Takuma, a Super Multi Coated, and an SMC version. Some radioactive, some not, but that's for another time in another video. Here's a small sample of images from this series. The earlier versions had fewer coatings and a dreamier look, but overall the bouquet from these lenses is lovely and smooth, and the bouquet balls are clear and impressive. I don't seem to have many fence bouquet shots that demonstrate this, so here are a couple of other images into a low winter sun with flare to show how these lenses can perform. Then we have the later 55mm series, which is even more extensive than the 50mm. It covers f1.8, f2 and f2.2 versions. There are quite a number of variations in features across this series, a subject I've covered in some depth in another YouTube video. Here's a small sample of fence bouquet from some of the lenses. And as you're looking at these images, I have to say I'm biased. I love the way these lenses render out of focus areas. And how they can differ from lens to lens and image to image sometimes with rings around the highlights, and sometimes just smooth shapes with no rings.
The next tachyma lens I own by focal length is a Super Tachyma 85mm f1.9, a very solid portrait lens in all senses. It's sharp and produces what can only be described as a lot of bouquet wide open. The issue with this lens is it's rather blown away bouquet-wise by two other old 85mm lenses I'll show you later, the Jupiter 9 and the Helios 40. Moving on to preset Takuma 200mm f3.5, this incredibly well-engineered lens can be used as a sort of hypercharged fast 50 given its focal range, with large bouquet balls and smooth bouquet stop down with its 18 blades. In the right circumstances, it will also produce large blurred objects with a kind of spirograph effect. You can just about see it here. After the Takumas came the Pentax branded lenses, and I have a few of those too. SMC 55mm f1.8 is basically an M42 mount Takuma with a K mount, and it produces similar images too. I used to own this K85mm f1.8 but sold it, as it's a valuable lens and I wasn't using it enough. However, it was a good bouquet ball lens and it wanted to be. Another excellent Pentax SMC lens converted from the last Takuma is the 135mm f2.5. Trust me, you can have a lot of fun with this lens wide open and stop down. Something I've not entirely captured with my fence photos, so here's a different take. The M 50mm f1.7 used to be one of the hidden gems of the camera world. It can produce lovely bouquet. It's much better known now. It's still a great lens. And one more Pentax lens from the film era, the superb f 100mm f2.8 macro. This in my view is one of the best macro lenses Pentax ever made. I haven't spent a lot of time testing its resolving power on fence bouquet photos, but when I have, as a very sharp 100mm lens, it absolutely delivers the goods. The radioactive Tomioka Auto Revunon 55mm f1.2 is one of the most fascinating M42 bouquet lenses. Not just because the very fast speed gives a wafer-thin narrow depth of field wide open, but also because how it renders out-of-focus areas. There's always something unusual going on in the extreme bouquet situations, like here, where there are some patterns in the balls. And then you can see in this photo how the design of the rear element, with a bite taken out, shows up in bouquet balls. It's such a fun lens to use, and just as much fun to play around with images in post-production. And now four other lenses that were probably made by Tomioka. Starting with an Auto Yashinon 5cm f2, this old lens with a cocking lever looks very similar to an Auto Takuma 55 f2. When you compare the two lenses, the Takuma produces bigger balls, perhaps because of that extra 5mm. This isn't a lens whose bouquet screams out at you, unlike some of the other Tomioka lenses, which you might find good or bad depending on your tastes. Next is the Yashika Yashinon DS 50mm f1.7. I do like this lens. It was a car boot cell find and it's really good. It's sharp wide open, the blur and the balls are lovely, the into and out of focus transitions are excellent, and the colours are really good once you've adjusted for any radioactive glass yellowing. One thing to note about all these Tomioka made lenses is that they also tend to produce exaggerated flares, and here's one example. Number four on this list of Tomioka lenses is this Mamiya Seekor 55mm f1.8, another good performer with characterful bouquet. Compiling this gallery of images makes me realise I don't use this lens nearly enough, and that's true for other lenses as well. The final Tomioka lens is a 55mm f1.4, one of a number of very highly regarded lenses of this type produced for different brands, including this Mamiya Seekor. I think my copy is a bit softer wide open than images from other copies I've seen online. But once I aggressively process the images, they can look beautiful with gorgeous painterly bouquet. One of the best loved cheap old soap bubble bouquet lenses is the Fujinon 55mm f2.2. While I don't own that lens, but I do have a 55mm f1.8, a better lens in my opinion, but with less pronounced aberrations. I think it's a fine lens and the bouquet does have a distinctive style. It's quite colourful in the right conditions. And one more cheap Japanese bubble producer, the Auto Chinon 50mm f1.9 in Pentax K-mount. It doesn't cost a lot, but it produces the goods. I've used two tear lenses, starting with the legendary 11A, a 20-bladed bouquet monster, and it really doesn't disappoint.
Here's an image at f8 just to show you how effective all those blades are. I bet if I showed you this without telling you the f-stop, you'd say it was wide open. And here are images taken wide open. The large bouquet balls, round and oval or cat size, with no rings around them, are gorgeous. And secondly, a tier 3S, 300mm f4.5, a big beast of the lens, part of the photo sniper kit. I was surprised at just how clean the bouquet balls are from this lens. If you get the right composition from afar, with the right background, you can produce some very nice results. The Jupiter 9, a 85mm f2 lens, is a lens with a lot of character and an excellent performer if you find a good copy. It produces lovely smooth bouquet and lovely clean bouquet balls. At least my version does, it's the early silver version. To add to the fun, it flares like mad in the right conditions, and I've got a lot of examples of this. The Zenitar M50 f1.7 has a strong reputation in certain quarters, and it can produce very nice smooth bouquet wide open and good bouquet balls. I'm showing you these non-fence photos, because when I look back at my albums, I seem to have spent all my time playing with a square filter at the front of the lens, trying to recreate images that look like they've been taken with the famous and much more expensive Zenitar ME1, famous for having a square aperture. Here are the results of my experiments. And last, but by no means least, are the Helios 44s and 40 lenses, the archetypal swirly bouquet lenses. For the 44s, there's the early silver 13 blade version. And what a fine lens this is. It's sharp wide open with swirly bouquet in the right conditions. But it's not all about the swirls. The bouquet and bouquet balls can be smooth and beautifully rendered wide open. Then there are the much more common 44 twos with different versions from different factories. Here are photographs from the Valdai factory version. The last preset version is the 44.3, and my copy is also an excellent performer. Then the 44M, the 44M4, 5, 6 and 7. I posted various other videos on Helios 44 lenses on YouTube if you're interested, including a look at their bouquet and how swirly the different lenses are. Here are some fence bouquet photos from the 44M6 and 7. And you'll notice that you're going to get better colours and contrasts with the improved coatings of these lenses. And then the big daddy, the Helios 40, 85mm f1.5. My copy is an early silver version. It's not only a big lens, a very big and heavy lens, it also produces big bouquet balls, big swirly balls. I've taken snaps of a lot of different fences with this Helios. It's so much fun to try and exploit its artistic possibilities. Finally, as an aside, if you're after big round bouquet balls and soap bubble bouquet, you could also consider trying projector lenses. People say some of them are optic girlets or pentagon projector lenses are good for soap bubble bouquet. I don't have one that does the full soap bubble effect, but it does do bubble bouquet all right. Or for gorgeous smooth bouquet, try a light Leica projector lens. I've got two Leica 90mm f2.5 colour plans, one made in Portugal and one made in Germany, and I've enjoyed using them both for close-up shots. They had to be close-up, as my adapters don't allow them to get anywhere near infinity, but I've been really pleased with the results. So that's the end of my fence bouquet images across a range of different vintage lenses. If you've made it all the way through this far, you may feel you'll never want to see another fence or railings image again. Perhaps I should really tip you over the edge by producing a similar video with images stopped down, showing you all the different shapes that Aperture Blades can produce. And of course there are many other lenses and brands not included here that will produce wonderful bouquet balls and bubbles if you find the right subjects, backgrounds and light. Based on what I've learned from my lenses, there are some conclusions to be made about their performance. First of all, I think it's fair to say that all lenses can produce bouquet balls wide open, in the right conditions. They might just not be very impressive or clear. There's a sort of myth about some of the best bouquet producers, the myth of the bouquet monsters, including lenses with a triplet design and lenses with large numbers of blades. Well, in terms of lenses with a triplet design, yes, they can and do produce rather nice soap bubble bouquet. 
However, this is not the only lens design that can produce soap bubble bouquet. On a lens-by-lens -lens basis, you can find other soap bubble producers, and just one example is the Mare Optic Girl It's Primata 135mm f3.5, and that's a Tessa design, not a triplet. And then the multi-bladed bouquet monsters. Yes, yeah, stop down, they produce smoother bouquet balls, but wide open, forget about the blades, they're irrelevant. So if you have a choice between, say, a lens with 15 blades and one with 6 blades, the 6-bladed lens can actually produce more bouquet monster images than the 15-bladed one wide open. Technically, there are some other features of a lens that can help it produce better bouquet balls and bubbles. The focal length and speed of a lens are definitely factors, although you can get some lovely smooth bouquet and large balls or bubbles from lenses as slow as f4, as long as you can focus close up to the subject. And close focusing is important. For lenses like the old Zeiss Biotar T, 58mm f2, I just wish it could focus closer without extension tubes. It would make it an even more special lens with larger, more juicy bouquet balls. Sharpness can also be an issue, especially with ultra-fast lenses, because you need the object in focus to look sharp. Otherwise, all the background blur can be overwhelming, and there's no subject in sharp focus to anchor the image. And then there's the rendering of blur, which can vary from smooth and coherent to busy and chaotic. I'm not a fan of busy and chaotic bouquet. Some of my newer lenses do render in a rather, how can I put it, blotchy way. They don't smooth out the blur and highlights. They accentuate the different areas and blocks within the blur. It certainly helps to find lenses of the kind of rendering and effects you personally prefer. And I hope the examples in this video will help, if you're considering any of the lenses I've been using. And on that note, I'd be very interested to learn more about the lenses you like the most for producing great bouquet and great bouquet balls and bubbles. Until the next time, I wish you all the best.